Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain magnetic boundary conditions with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I'll discuss about basics of magnetic boundary condition. After that, I will derive magnetic boundary conditions for tangential component and for normal component. So let us begin this video with first agenda that is basics of magnetic boundary conditions. First of all, one should know what is magnetic boundary conditions. See, when magnetic field that enters from one medium to another medium, at that time, how much discontinuities are there with magnetic field that could be identified by magnetic boundary conditions. So magnetic boundary conditions that we understand to identify discontinuities when magnetic field enters from one medium to another medium. Let me explain that by one example. Here, let us consider we have two different mediums. Upper side is having medium 1 and lower side that is having medium 2. Here, upper side that is having magnetic field B that is entering from medium 1 to medium 2. So, with medium 2, we have magnetic field that is B dash. Now, from B to B dash, how much discontinuities are happening that we are delivered to identify and that we can identify by two different components. First component is tangential component and second component is normal component. Let us assume with medium 1, tangential component is BT1 and normal component is BN1 and when these components are entering into medium 2, at that time, let us say with medium 2 tangential component that is BT2 and normal component is BN2. Here one should understand one thing. See tangential component means the component of magnetic field which is parallel to surface and normal component that is perpendicular to surface. Right. Now I will explain calculation of magnetic boundary conditions for normal component. So here I will establish relationship in between normal component of magnetic field when magnetic field enters from one medium to second medium. So here I will be considering two separate mediums and that is separated by this surface you can observe. I have drawn this surface in three dimension. The reason is I want to show you some calculation. Right. So here this red color surface that is separating medium 1 and medium 2. Here with medium 1, normal component is BN1 and with medium 2, normal component is BN2. Here I will be considering small differential volume. Here this volume is appearing bit large, but for calculation purpose, I am showing it to you large. Let us consider we have small differential volume that is shown by six different sides you can observe. Here we have Cartesian coordinate system in which this direction that is y direction, this direction that is x direction and this direction that is z direction. Right. And here with respect to y direction, here with this volume, length is delta y with respect to x direction, length is delta x and with respect to z direction, spacing is delta z. Here one thing that you need to understand. See this delta z spacing that is extremely narrow. Why it is extremely narrow? The reason is once we have change with respect to delta z, then signal will go from one medium to another medium. Right. So this delta z that is going towards zero that one can say. Here to identify the relation in between BN1 and BN2, I will apply Gauss's law for magnetic field. One should know Gauss's law for magnetic field. For enclosed surface, magnetic flux is always zero. That is Gauss's law for magnetic field. What is flux? Flux is B dot dS. Here we will identify magnetic flux for this enclosed surface. See here with this enclosed surface, in total six surfaces are there. See this is top surface, this is bottom surface, this is front surface, 
this is back surface this is right surface and this is left surface right so in total six surfaces are there so this magnetic flux for enclosed surface that one can divide into six different surfaces you can observe over here now we will calculate magnetic flux for this six different surfaces as i have told you here this delta z that is very narrow that is going towards zero why the reason is once we have change with respect to z then signal is going from one medium to another medium so this delta z value that is almost zero that one can say as if this delta z value is almost zero then for this front with this back with this right and with this left surface area is almost negligible right so b dot ds for this right left front and back surface that is zero over here right so now we need to identify magnetic flux that is integration of bds for top and bottom surface only the reason is here left right front and back that surface is there with respect to delta z that's why this is zero right here if you observe b dot ds for top so that is happening with respect to this top surface that is bn1 which is magnetic field into medium 1 into this area and this area that is delta x into delta y so bds for top that is bn1 into delta x into delta y and here bds for bottom means for this surface it is negative of bn2 into delta x delta y now question is why here we have negative sign see there is a negative sign the reason is flux because of bn1 that is entering inside this surface and one should know entering flux is negative and flux because of bn1 that is leaving this surface and one should know leaving flux is positive right that's why here we have a negative sign if you cancel out delta x delta y then one can say bn1 is equals to bn2 means with normal component there is no discontinuity in magnetic field means with normal component when magnetic field enters from one medium to another medium at the time magnetic field strength that will remain as it is there is no discontinuity right so here we have identified discontinuities with normal component of magnetic field when it enters from one medium to another medium right now i will derive boundary conditions for tangential component to identify boundary conditions for tangential component let us consider two mediums here on top we have medium 1 and at bottom we have medium 2 with medium 1 tangential component is ht1 that is magnetic field intensity here we are not considering magnetic field here we are considering magnetic field intensity and with medium 2 magnetic field intensity is ht2 both are tangential component over here right here see we have a surface in between medium 1 and medium 2 and with this surface you need to understand dimensions so vertically we have y dimension and surface is there along with x direction and on this surface we have current per unit length let us say that current per unit length is k and to identify magnetic field boundary conditions for tangential component here i will be applying line integration of magnetic field intensity so here i'll be considering closed loop that closed loop that is varying from a to b b to c c to d and d to a and by applying ampere circuit law in this loop we can identify relation in between ht1 and ht2 so now let us apply ampere circuit law ampere circuit law states that line integration of magnetic field intensity is current enclosed by given loop so here we have a loop and in this loop 
लाइन इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इंटेंसिटी दैट इज करंट एनक्लोज बाय दिस लूप हियर करंट इज आई एंड दैट करंट आई दैट इज सरफेस करंट पर यूनिट लेंथ इनटू डेल्टा एक्स व्हाई डेल्टा एक्स द रीजन इज हियर वी आर कंसीडरिंग सरफेस अलोंग द एक्स डायरेक्शन राइट नाउ हियर वी हैव एनक्लोज्ड लूप राइट सो व्हाट वी कैन डू इज वी कैन डू this line integration with respect to four different lines means from a to b from b to c from c to d and from d to a we will be doing separate line integration over here that is equals to k into delta x now you need to understand few basics over here see here from b to c and from d to a we don't have magnetic field intensity for tangential component means from b to c from b to c this line integration which is having h that is zero and from d to a here we don't have magnetic field intensity means from d to a this line integration is also zero so we need to identify line integration from a to b from a to b and from c to d from c to d right now what is line integration from a to b so that is ht1 into this much length that is delta x and if you observe ht1 and a to b direction that is in same direction means line integration from a to b with this magnetic field intensity is ht1 into delta x while if you do line integration from c to d where ht2 into delta x is there but ht2 and line integration that is there in opposite direction right means there will be negative sign over here so here see a to b line integration that is ht1 into delta x as ht1 and delta x both are there in same direction while this line integration from c to d hdl that is ht2 into minus delta x that's why here we have negative sign if you cancel out this delta x from both of the sides then you will be having ht1 minus ht2 that is k where k is surface current per unit length right so there is a discontinuity in magnetic field intensity as per surface current with tangential component while with normal component there is no discontinuity in magnetic field right so these equations are very essential for solving examples in next video i'll explain you one very interesting problem based on boundary conditions of magnetic field where we will be using this concepts i hope you have enjoyed this session still if anything that i would like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video